Hello and welcome to the Curiosity and Consciousness podcast. The intention of this podcast is to open your mind, get curious about yourself and connect to the power you hold within. I am your host, Karen Maloney, an inside out coach, helping you to believe in yourself and manifest your desires. Check out the podcast available on all platforms and go to my website, www.karenmaloney.com for all info. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome. It's me, Carmeloni, and thanks for joining for another episode. I hope you had a lovely Easter and here we are back again. And this week it's me and I'll just be sharing a short episode with you this week. Something that I heard, well, wasn't even the, the theme of the talk, but something that Marianne Williamson mentioned in a recent video I was watching of her, she mentioned these words, emotional persona. And it just really struck a chord with me. And that's what I'm going to share with you today, an invitation to maybe look at the emotional persona that you carry around, that you move in, that you live with day to day. And then also maybe how we can shift it. So Before jumping in as well, just to mention that I have some coaching slots coming up available, one-to-one coaching. So if you would like coaching to make changes, again, mindset, inner work, releasing your own inner critic, creating more self-belief and essentially changing your life and your vision for your life and yourself, it all starts within always. If you would like to do some one-to-one coaching, just pop me an email, support at karenmaloney.com and I will send you more info. So then back to this idea of emotional persona. And like that, when I heard those words, it just really jumped out at me because if we stop and think about it, most of the time we will feel some sort of similar emotion day in, day out. So what is the emotional persona that you generally tend to live in? So is that a sense of fear or anxiety or worry, doubt, complaining, agitation, irritated, frustrated? You know, what is the general emotional state and welfare on a day to day basis? Or what are the most common emotion or emotions that you feel day in, day out? Like, where do you live emotionally within yourself? And again, you know, everything comes from a thought. We cannot feel an emotion without a thought in the first place. But often our thoughts are so subconscious, they're so hidden from us that we don't even know what we're thinking that sets off the emotion in the first place. And I know for me, learning to connect more with my body, with my emotions, really helped me to be able to name them, become aware of what I was feeling as well consistently in my life. And then from there, you can trace it back to your thoughts as well. But for today, I'm asking you to focus more on that emotional state that you live in constantly. And again, often it requires taking a pause or a couple of minutes out throughout your day, even for a week, take a piece of paper or a journal or a notebook if you have one. And, you know, first thing in the morning or in the middle of the day or just before you go to bed, just notice how am I feeling? Write down that question. How am I feeling? And do that over the space of like a week, more if possible, but even over a week. And just notice what is the pattern? You know, is it anxiety? Is it fear? Is it depression? Is it low self-esteem? Is it criticism? Is it complaining? Is it, you know, what is it? And then once you have that and see what is the most common state that you live in, well, then I would invite you to change it. And using a practice like loving kindness from the Buddhist tradition, where it's like meta meditation, where you go around sending new thoughts or new energy to everyone and everything that you 
meet, whether in person or whether it's over the phone or email or whatever, you would send loving kindness before hitting send or before interacting with someone or even while you're sitting there with someone in your mind, you're sending loving kindness. So so say, for example, you notice that your main emotional state that you're feeling is worry. So that's what pops up a lot for you. Worry. I would invite you then to ask yourself what you would prefer to feel in place of worry. So say, for example, you would like to feel more peace, more calm. Well, then that is what you start repeating to yourself internally. And you can just start saying, may I be peaceful? 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 May I be calm? And again, this is all internally in our mind. We don't have to say the words out loud. But once you start repeating and making that a consistent mantra for yourself and also then sending it out before you to others, may you be peaceful? May you be peaceful? May they be peaceful? And again, whether you're going to connect on a phone call with someone, an email, you're sitting in front of someone, you're you're silently again, you're not repeating it out loud, you're silently again in your mind saying, may you be peaceful, may you be peaceful. Because again, the thing about all this inner work is what we carry within, we transmit anyway. So if we're carrying all that worry or fear or doubt or anxiety, you know, we are transmitting that and bringing it with us to everyone, to everything in every interaction, in every way, even if we don't actually speak words that follow up on that emotion as well. And we're actually talking about what's worrying us or has us full of fear or doubt or uncertainty. We're still thinking it and feeling it inside. So it is transmitting out of us. It has been reproduced in our external reality always. So that's why I invite you to do this practice of noticing what is the most common emotional state that you're in. And again, that's why I really liked emotional persona, because it's not us. Our emotions are not us, but we attach to them and we think we are, as opposed to knowing that we're just experiencing this emotion we instead tell ourselves and identify ourselves as the emotion. And that's not the truth. We're not our emotions. So that idea of emotional persona, I just really, really liked. So notice what is your emotional persona? And then once you have that, notice what would you prefer instead? You know, whether it's more peace, calm, fun, abundance, joy, love, whatever it is. And then silently inside, start making that your mantra to yourself all day using that loving kindness method of may I be peaceful? May I be joy filled? May I feel love? May I be abundant? May I be happy? And also sending that to others in every interaction. And especially if we feel triggered or the situation is unpleasant, especially start repeating it to yourself then. Again, to yourself, may I be peaceful. And to others, may you be well, may you be peaceful, may you be happy, may you be joy filled, may you be abundant, may you be loved. Because again, what we send to others as well, we are receiving because it's coming from us in the first place. So if we constantly want to send irritation, complaining, resentment, fear, worry, you know, we're feeling all of those as well. So once we start to observe and then choose more consciously what we do want in our life and put our focus there, well, then that's what will grow. That's what we will feel. And that's where our power is always in our ability to choose our focus and our awareness. And really, it's all about coming down to managing our awareness, being intentional with our thoughts and our focus. And again, it does all start with thoughts. Everything starts with thoughts and we're always dealing with thoughts. But again, they can be so subconscious and fast paced that it can be hard to know what we are thinking in the first place. So by 
connecting with our emotional persona, noticing the emotions that we're feeling more of. They are a segue, and I know that was the case for me, to becoming more conscious of my thoughts as well. But again, like everything, in order to do these practices and to become aware, we have to allow a pause. We have to allow a moment of stillness. We have to go into that inner quiet observation space. We can't do it when we're running and rushing around the place. So again, we have to be intentional in choosing to take a pause and to observe and to notice and to ask ourselves to inquire within and see what the hell is going on. Because once we are aware, well, then we have something to work with. Then we can choose something different. Then we can put our focus elsewhere. But it has to start with the awareness, first of all. And again, you know, if you don't have a meditation practice or a stillness practice or you're not used to taking a pause like me years ago, it seems hard because so much comes up and all these thoughts start worrying. And sometimes we're feeling all sorts of things and memories, but it's all okay. We don't have to engage with them. We don't have to judge ourselves for them. We don't have to criticize ourselves for them. It's totally normal not to be able to connect to stillness instantly because it is a practice. And all these things that are just popping up, it's because they need to pop up. We need to notice them in order to release them. So just know it's normal. It's not a reason to give up. And yeah, let me know how you get on with this practice. Checking in your emotional persona and then changing it using that silent inner mind speak of meta meditation, loving kindness. Again, sending it to yourself and sending it to others in every situation, whether you're in a shop, you're with a friend, you're with a stranger, you're with your partner, you just silently repeat that to yourself and it will change everything about the situation and how you're feeling. So let me know how you get on with that. And again, if anyone needs some guidance on this inner work and learning to be more intentional with our thoughts and changing our inner critic and being more intentional in our lives and learning to manage our awareness, pop me an email support at karenmaloney.com. And again, I have one to one coaching or also silent counseling packages that help you to release all this mind chatter and negative speak and conflicting energies that will then help you to move into a space of pause and stillness and observation easier. So support at KarenMaloney.com and I will speak to you soon. Bye.